Welcome back to the second part of the story of Mrs. Rudd's dressing table. So there she was passing off faked notes to bankers, promissory notes, and she was getting the Perro twins to pass them off. She never herself went and gave them, which was clever. Unfortunately, one of the bankers recognised that the signature on the note was a forgery because he knew the real signatory. And so when the Perro twins turned up to collect the money, they were arrested by the magistrates and were charged with forgery. Great, great crime. They stood trial at the Old Bailey. The interest in this trial was so great that people queued around the Old Bailey right the way around the block to get into the trial. It was in effect as famous in England in 1775 as the O.J. Simpson trial was in America 200 years later. Margaret Caroline Rudd claimed that she had nothing to do with it, that it was the Perrow twins themselves who had forged the signatory on the note. They stood trial. She gave evidence to the effect that she had nothing to do with it and she fluttered her eyelids at the jury and the judge and everyone else in the court. The boys were found guilty and were sentenced to death on a cold, snowy winter's day in January 1776. They were taken to Tyburn and were hanged by the neck to an audience of over 30,000 Londoners who turned out for the execution. In the meanwhile, Margaret Caroline Rudd carried on just being, as she always had been, herself, a wayward Irish woman. With this table, though, there is an interesting corollary to that. And if I can just open the centre drawer, you will see why. There you have the writing drawer. And it begs the question, is this where she sat? to write out the forged notes before handing them to the Perrault brothers. She would have kept her paper, ink, pens and the such like there. And there we have it.